So I, I say book, right? Book. Okay. Book. <laughs> book. <laughs> book. <sighs> Children. <laughs> We're talking about Hocus Pocus. A 1993 film came out, uh, stars Thora Birch. Nice going, Airhead. Some dude. I was out here. Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, I am beautiful. The divine Miss M, Bette Midler. Eh? Kathy and Jimmy. Kathy and Jimmy. What a weird last name you have, Kathy and Jimmy. I don't. Kathy uh, and Jimmy? Nejimmy. It says form a circle of salt to protect from zombies, witches, and little boyfriends. Ridiculous comedy. Actually, it's funny. I think that this is the movie that the word spoopy is most used in association with. Spoopy, in case you're old like me and you're not up on the BuzzFeed buzzwords, uh, is a word used to describe a scary movies that aren't really scary. Scary movies that are cute. So, spoopy. We're making a potion that will convert children into eternal youth or something. Honestly, it's been a while since I've seen that movie, so I'm not entirely clear on what the, the finer points of the plot. I just know that um, it was a sweet film. I had a crush on that whole scenario. In the film, uh, the Sanderson sisters in the 1600s are tried for witchcraft, deservedly so. We are just three kindly old spits here, ladies. Spending a quiet evening at home, sucking the lives of little children and hung at, uh, well, you can't get hung at the stake. They get hung from a tree and buried in its roots, or am I confusing Ernest Scared Stupid? What are the chances of that hat? They just get hung. Uh, the roots thing is Ernest Scared Stupid. There's uh, some kind of a witch or something tied up in the roots and they get them out. Ernest Scared Stupid, another great Hollywood classic. So much chemistry between Sarah Jessica Parker and Kathy and Jimmy and Bette Midler, um, really in the most vaudevillian sense of comedy uh, kind of carry this film. Just a spoopy doopy fun Halloween classic. Happy Halloween, we're doing Halloween. Like in so many Cinderella tales, these poor downtrodden witches just trying to stay young have got to get a child to drink this potion so that they can remain young forever or else return to dust and die by sunup. Uh, so they gotta get this potion drunk. Winnie really screws it all up for everybody by getting fixated on Thora Birch. This is perfect for that little toe-headed brat! When like, there's like, armies of children just like, desperate to drink this stuff in the movie. We have a child! Here! And look, Winnie, more children are arriving! They're like, we're just trying to live forever, man! And, like, she's like, no, but I want her! And, you know, like, all right, but we could like, literally live forever and then get her. Winnie, Winnie, we will make more potion because we have the fun! We have the time! Like, there's so much time to solve this problem. Besides, I want to get that little rat-faced kid that called me! Oh, oh don't say it, dirty face. Ugly? Ah! Okay. Here on How to Drink, we're gonna make children's potion. That sounds gross and wrong. But it's a green liquid in a bottle much like this. Mine says 250 milliliters on it. Yours doesn't have to. That's all right. So the movie Witty says, mix blood of an owl, uh, herb that's red, turned three times, and a hair from my head. But I can tell you that when we see a close-up of the book itself, from which she's reading a spell, that's not the recipe that's written there, so, you know, touchstone pictures. Get on the fucking ball. Good thing we don't need that owl's blood to make this. No, the book says, bringeth to a full rousing bubble, then add two drops of boil oil, or oil of boil. I guess that means like pimple pus, yum. Um, so we'll work on that. And a dead man's toes, sort of a sour cocktail from South Dakota. And next add a dab of newt saliva, a dash of pox, and stir three times. One final thing, all is done. Add a piece of thine own tongue, your spit, spitting it. So I'm probably not gonna use any of those ingredients, um, like pus or newt blood or my spit. That sounds super duper gross. But uh, in the movie we see it, it's in a bottle like this. It is green. And I think we can work with that. I think we can work with that. So I'm gonna shake this drink in the shaker. Yeah, I need a half an ounce of lime. Uh, fan made this amazing thing for me. Isn't that incredible? Look at that on the back. It says, Caca! It's All right, I need a half an ounce of lime, a half an ounce of orjo. I need one ounce of Midori. 
I feel like I get one use of Midori to make a green drink. And I was thinking about it last night. I've done some green drinks. I don't think any of them have leaned on Midori. And I've done some drinks with Midori, and I don't think any of them were green. So I think this is it. This is my one use of Midori for a green drink drink. There it is. All right. Want an ounce and a half of London Dry Gin. I pretty much almost always will use Ford's. Slightly fatter than an ounce and a half, but you know, won't be a problem. And now I need a half an ounce of Ray and Nephew Overproof Rum. Uh, that's a weird blend, Midori Gin and Rum, but um, you know, it worked. That's why I'm doing it. Per Dave Arnold's instructions, I always use one whole cube and one cracked cube. We're gonna just try and thread that needle in there. There we go. All right, there we go. So if I drink this, um, I will die and someone else will live forever, I guess. Uh, there's smokes a lot in the movie, but that's because they put dry ice in it, which is, uh, you know, Hollywood thing. Uh, oh, is my hat like erect? I don't like that. I don't want to have a cranial. Oh, really? I didn't want a cranial like erection. I wanted it to be a little more bent here. It's like a little jauntier, you know? Um, this one doesn't because I have to drink it, but in the close up, it'll smoke like crazy because I'm going to throw some liquid nitrogen in there. Don't do that in real life because if you drink that, you'll have to cut your stomach out. It'd be bad for you. All right, let's try this thing out. I haven't named it yet, but the episode title has a name for it. Oh, man! This is the Sanderson Sister Slammer. That's the name of it. Here we go. So good, knock your hat right off. Whew. It's potent. Honestly, this should be like in a coupe. I mean, this is not something you want to drink through um, a funnel. This is more of a sipping drink. This is more of a cocktail, like a martini strength type drink. Uh, this round bottom flask kind of wants to dump like two ounces of it at a time directly into your mouth. All right, so that's pretty sweet. But it's not devoid of character. I would say a lot, of, a lot of orchard fruit, really, right? Like I, I personally get some, some apple there. Um, I know that Midori is supposed to be melon flavored, but I don't know what kind of melon Midori is melon flavored after. I, I don't. Um, it doesn't taste like melons I've ever eaten. To be honest, I, it's just, it's just frank. Like it's not. Uh, you know, taste is subjective. Blah blah blah. Like that's just not part of my taste, memory, or sense. Um, and maybe it's the color that throws me off, but I do get sort of apple off of that. The gin, the juniper is maybe contributing to that. There's like a kind of foresty, piney quality to that that brings that in. It is really subdued um, in this particular drink. It's not super duper forward at all. Uh, the orjo does kind of disappear, just sort of melds things together. Maybe it's not actually necessary if I'm really... It depends, like it's one of those things about like, Who's the drink for and how accessible do you want this to be? You could definitely dial the sweetness down for some people. But I will say that I think that the Ray and Nephew is kind of vital. That adds a character to the evolution that can't be replaced. Um, that kind of rotting banana rum funk that comes from that. And it's a wonderful thing that I love about this Ray and Nephew overproof is that maybe I'm overstating things, but for me, it's almost like you can use it almost like an absinthe where it's like a little bit goes so far into the evolution and flavor profile of a cocktail. I don't know. I don't have anybody else's mouth but my own. So I don't know. It's a very personal experience between me and the glass. I mean the glass. Yeah, I mean, this is sort of a variation on like a Midori gin sour daiquiri, Midori daiquiri sour gin. It's not the world's greatest cocktail. <laughs> but you know, if you were doing a themed Halloween party and you wanted to serve up some Sanderson sister slammers, as I've decided to name them, it was a great, great alliteration. There are three S's in a row. It's beautiful. Sanderson sister slammers. This would be the way to go. A muck. A muck, a muck. Muck. Yes, that's right. That's what what's her name says. Uh, Sarah, not Sarah Michelle Geller. Sarah Jessica Parker. And she does it. It's like cute. When I do it, it's pandering and weird. I hope you're having a great Halloween and that your pillowcase is just filled with candy. Did your parents ever give you one of those like stupid orange pumpkin things to drag around for Halloween? 
And that was a mistake. You gotta get the pillowcase. That is a much more ergonomic candy hauling design. You can fit more candy in it. It folds up easier. You can sling it over your shoulder. Pillowcase is the way to go. Ah, the side. Ah. She turns into stone. Oh, really? Yeah, she does. The other two kind of melt into the ground. That's tragic. That's tragic.